Hello everybody and welcome to Blue Marble Science. Anyone for some southern deep fried black swan? You know, Quantum Eraser's been prancing around like a shih tzu with a new chew toy. He thinks a highly distorted version of the image you see here somehow or the other proves the Earth is flat. Well, let's show him just exactly how wrong he is. And while we're at it, let's see if he can explain what's hiding these oil rigs. Spoiler alert. It's Earth Curve. Hey, move the monitors back, get the oven mitts. You guys know the routine. Welcome to the Collector's Edition Exposition of the number one ball killer, bar none. I've given everyone the afternoon off, so it's just you and me. Let's call it quality cowbell time. Pay close attention then send this gargantuan death blow to everyone you know. There was a textual error in one of the photos in the last presentation. I'll identify that here in a few minutes. It has no material impact on the argument whatsoever. And a phenomenon that's happened quite recently, some knucklehead flat earthers have decided to wield this simple argument like a three-month-old wields a Husqvarna chainsaw. So... I'll be going through this baller chimera each week for the foreseeable future. It's so utterly devastating, folks. I'm going to kill it with such ferocity it's going to make the $6 million man crash and burn look like a fender bender. Don't be so confident, Scooter. You're about to get your pee-pee smacked. The ease in which the calamity befalleth it. Many thanks to Ben, Taboo Conspiracy, for bringing it to my attention, and BMLSB69 for the boots on the ground. Before I pummel this disheveled monkey, allow me to lay the foundation of the entire argument. And it's really simple. The horizon. I've got three definitions here. One from their alma mater wiki, Merriam-Webster, and Oxford Dictionaries. The horizon. It's the apparent line that separates Earth from sky. The line where the Earth seems to meet the sky, the apparent junction of the Earth and sky sailing toward the horizon. And finally, the line at which the Earth's surface and the sky appear to meet. It's just that simple. Why is it apparent? That is, not actually? Well, one is well die, right? The sky never actually meets the ground. That's a big one. And number two, it's conditional on weather, atmospheric conditions, waves, tides, etc. Hold on there, numb nuts. That was misleading. You skipped over atmospheric effects like an eight-year-old schoolgirl trying to avoid the cracks in a sidewalk. We can't see a geometric horizon. We see an apparent or visible horizon, and it's further than the geometric calculation because of the effects of atmospheric refraction. Due to atmospheric refraction, the distance to the visible horizon is further than the distance based on a simple geometric calculation. If the ground or water surface is colder than the air above it, a cold, dense layer of air forms close to the surface causing light to be refracted downward as it travels and therefore, to some extent, go around the curvature of the Earth. Why did you leave that part out, Kiwi? However, on the Baltard ball, the geometric horizon can be no more than, this is very important, critical, the geometric horizon can be no more than what its geometric constraints allow. It's based on the observer's height and the radius. Oh, please tell me you didn't just do that. Less than five minutes in and you just debunked your own claim. Now you're gonna try to assert that you think you see a horizon beyond these platforms and that just can't be on a curved earth because of the geometric horizon. Huey, you're an idiot. 
Let's do this one more time. Due to atmospheric refraction, the distance to the visible horizon is further than the distance based on a simple geometric calculation. You know, it's kind of pointless to go on from here, but we may as well have a little fun. Continue. Let's confirm that with the subject matter expert in the area. Andrew Thomas Young, San Diego State University Astronomy Department. If H is in meters, that makes the distance to the geometric horizon 3.57 kilometers times the square root of the height of the eye in meters, or about 1.23 miles times the square root of the eye height in feet. That's it, folks. Now, it can be closer, the horizon can be closer than this, but under no circumstances, under any conditions, can it be any more than 1.23 miles times the square root of the eye height in feet? Hopefully, everyone understands that. Hold on again, numbnuts. Andrew Young is giving the calculation to the geometric horizon, not the one we see. The apparent horizon has to include the effects of refraction. Kiwi, you're not getting away with your lies and deceptions this time. Do we need to go over this again? Without further ado. You queued up the wrong music, Kiwi. This is what you were supposed to be using. The death of the baltard spinning space monkey religion. Again. Listen closely. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every horizon distance measurement must be no more than, that's a very important statement right there, must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. That's the geometric horizon. Go to any curve calculator. That's the formula they use. That's actually not the formula that's used in the Earth curve calculators, QE. This is the formula that's used in Earth curve calculators. I did this in a video a couple of weeks ago. You can look it up if you want to. I'm not going to waste my time trying to teach you eighth grade geometry. But you're still talking about the geometric horizon. You're still talking about the one we don't see. You're intentionally misleading people, and you know it. What do we have right here? It's called the kill shot. We can clearly see the horizon behind platform habitat at 9.4 miles. It's over right here, folks. The rest is barely palpable background noise, but let's have some fun. So, the observer's height in this particular photo was one foot. Distance to the horizon, according to our formula, greater than 9.41 miles. Distance to the horizon maximum for a sphere with a R radius of 39.59 miles, according to that formula, is 1.22 miles. Um, you have some big problems right here. Now, one of the rebuttals, one of the objections was that BMLS B69 was greater than one foot. Now, we're going to hammer that into the incoherent oblivion here in one second. However, even if he was five feet, his observer height was five feet, the maximum distance to the geometric horizon should be 2.73 miles. That means it should be before Platform Hill House, right? Even if he was standing on the shore with his camera almost in the water, at 35 feet, the maximum distance to the geometric horizon would be 7.24 miles. That is, it would be in between Platform Hill House and Platform Habitat. So, that's debunked. You are intentionally confusing the geometric horizon with the visible or apparent horizon. Once again, 
Due to atmospheric refraction, the distance to the visible horizon is further than the distance based on a simple geometric calculation. This is Walter Bilson's Earth Curve Calculator. I've got an observer height of one foot, a distance to the target of 9.4 miles. I've got refraction set at zero. That would mean that the distance to the horizon that the calculator is coming up with is actually the geometric horizon, 1.22455 miles. What happens as the refractive index increases? Well, watch. The distance on the surface, the distance to the horizon, is increasing. And under extreme cases, let's say we make uh, refraction 0.99, what happens? Distance to the horizon, even with a one foot observer height, is 12.24 miles. Now you're going to say, that's ridiculous, that can't happen. Well, yes it can. There are documented cases of ships at sea seeing each other over a distance of 80 miles. It can happen, and it does happen. We don't know the details of the atmospheric conditions on that particular day. And another thing we don't know is what we're actually looking at. Given the amount of distortion and refraction we're seeing and the amount of manipulation you've done to that video, it's anybody's guess if that's actually a horizon back there that you're seeing or some other video anomaly. Regardless, the bottom line is this. Your argument is completely blown and you blew it when you decided to insist on the geometric horizon rather than an apparent horizon. Sorry, QE, you lose this one. Now for the, for the next kill shot, Modus Tollens. Holy shnikes, this is gonna leave a mark. If P, then Q. Not Q, therefore not P. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, P, then any horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, Q. Not Q, why? Because the horizon distance was greater than 9.41 miles. Therefore, not P. The Earth is not a sphere. The Baltard Spinning Space Monkey Community, please allow me to introduce to you the one you've known for all these years, your Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Black Plague, your Black Swan. I've clearly shown that the Black Swan argument was dead on arrival, and it was dead as soon as you confused geometric and visible horizons. As soon as you tried to take something we can't see and compare it to something we do see, this was done. It's a moot point, but there's more to it than that. Now look, Huey, I know you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. So let me try to explain this to you. Let me try to explain the black swan theory in a way that you might understand it. The black swan theory, or the theory of black swan events, is simply a metaphor that describes an event that comes as a surprise has a major effect and is often inappropriately rationalized after the fact with the benefit of hindsight. The term is based on an ancient saying that presumed black swans did not exist, a saying that became reinterpreted to teach a different lesson after black swans were discovered in the wild. This is not even the correct argument to be making, QE, and here's why. Number one, this is not a surprise. This is exactly what we expect to see happen when you have severe refraction in the atmosphere. You can't possibly argue that this picture is not severely refracted. Take a look at that crane boom on the left. Number two, it has no real effect on this argument one way or the other. It is a single one-of-a-kind, one-time photograph. That's all. And number three, it doesn't require any rationalization. We understand refraction. We understand exactly how it works. You have failed completely on this one, QE. Here is the final kill shot. 
This photo is impossible on their sphere. Let me say that again. This photo with the horizon behind the platform habitat is impossible under any conditions on their sphere. That's it. And I'll go home. It's over. Here's a screen capture before you manipulated it, and not only is this possible on a globe, it's pretty damn likely, especially on a day with as much refraction as you see on this particular day. But you know, this is not what you ought to be worried about. Here's the picture you need to worry about. This is the one that's impossible on a flat earth. More on that in a minute. Now they're going to attempt quite feebly, I might add, to escape and evade, tap dance, and clumsily attempt to obfuscate using all manner of Mr. Magoo's sophistry. But I'm going to stamp them out with belly laughing ease and extreme prejudice. So, let's take a look at some pedigree information. We're going to take a look at the original video from BL BLMSB69. I've sped up this portion of the video. QE narrates his way through the early part of this, and essentially it's the original content creator documenting the location of the two platforms, his location, and the distances to each of the platforms. It's all been confirmed. Uh, there's nothing about this that's in dispute. couple things here. Obviously, he's pretty close to sea level. Don't you think? I also want to get your attention over here to this landmass, right? Because we're going to pummel another rebuttal, quite feeble one, I might add, here in a couple minutes. Um, this is Santa Cruz Island, and it's off to the right because the platforms are right here. It's going to be off to the right of these platforms. Let's continue. As he zooms in, I want you to watch the boat that's between the two platforms. It's right there where the red arrow is. There's no horizon apparent behind either one of these platforms. However, there is one that appears to be in front of the platforms. It's right here where this red line is. Note the difference in the color of the sky versus the lighter color of the ocean when I take the red line away. Pay attention. There, you can see that line pretty clearly. This is the uncut video running in slow motion. We've done nothing to the color. I want you to pay attention to the refraction and I want you to pay attention to that little boat. Notice how the refraction is changing with the platform habitat on the left. And watch right there as the little boat actually disappeared. You saw the image go blurry. We're going to play it in even slower motion. Now QE picked the frame he liked and heavily altered the coloring. I have no idea what we're really seeing in his still shot. Let's pay attention to what goes on in this video. You're going to see that effect again. Watch the platform on the left, the helipad, and watch the little boat as it comes into view. Now we're beginning to see it. You can see the refraction changing in the crane booms, but watch right here. All of a sudden, it blurs. That is refraction. That's how much the refraction is changing. D-E-D. -E -D, dead. Yes, you are. Curve calculator, one 
One foot eye height, 1.22 miles to the horizon. Now, focus your attention to the right of the photo. Now at this point, Captain Whistledick is going to spend a lot of time trying to convince us that there's no land behind these two platforms. We know that to begin with, so this might be a good time for a break. Or some music. So, potential debunks. We already took two to the woodshed. The first one was BMLSB 69 isn't one foot elevation. Well, uh, kind of is. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one to three feet. No problem. It doesn't matter anyway. Because I took this to the woodshed in the beginning. He could have been five foot. He can have been at 35 feet at that same position. It matters not. Number two, there is land or islands behind the platforms. Clearly, I showed you when we were keeping it real and with Google Earth that that's not the case. Number three, you can't see the horizon. Um, One of two things is happening here. Number one, you need to remove the baked on cognitive dissonance mud from your eyes. And or number two, Make an ASAP appointment with the ophthalmologist. Or number three, stop manipulating the video. That might be a good idea. Just to let you know, if you look at this photo and you say you can't see the horizon, you're a horse's ass. Because I don't care. If you're legally blind, I still think you can see this horizon. You tell me. This is the kill shot. Well, that's not a kill shot. This is a kill shot. The content creator made two uh, videos. He made one from a 35 foot elevation. This is a screen capture from that position. He made a second one from a one foot elevation. Here's a screen capture from that. I wonder what happens if we impose the 35 foot screen capture on top of this one foot elevation screen capture. Let's put a line on there to show where the legs are disappearing into the water and four corner points that we can use for alignment. Let's see what that 35 foot elevation looks like. Oh, there it is. That lines up pretty nicely. Let's try that again. There we go. Notice anything funny? Do you have any explanation on a flat earth for why about half of the platform legs are missing at the one foot observer height? Now that's a kill shot. This is the black swan. Oh, number four, the white swans. This photo was taken two months, same position, same observer height, same camera, same everything. This was taken in December, so two months after the black swan, right? No problem here, right? The sea was angry that day, my friends. It doesn't matter, though. Remember the argument. The horizon cannot be greater than that ratio of the observer height on a radius of 3959 miles. So this is before. It's fine. It's before the second platform. There's atmospheric shenanigans going on here. That's okay. No problem. This photo was taken four days after. This white swan was taken four days after the black swan. Again, no problem. Now, I watched this video. It doesn't seem that he was one foot. It seemed like he, was, he stood up and took this picture. It matters not, right? This is what they call a white swan. 
Well, no, this is not a white swan. We've already been over that. This is the view we expect to see on a normal day. But occasionally, we see what you've been trying to call a black swan. It's not a black swan if it's not a surprise to us. Now, since you didn't want to play the video, I'll play it for you. And you're right, thanks for pointing it out. He actually is higher than one foot, and all that does is make more of those platforms visible, not less of them. That doesn't look like an angry sea to me. That actually looks like pretty calm water. Gee, the bottom of that platform is missing. Do you have any explanation for that? He even shows you how much. What about habitat? Whoa, that thing is sinking. Look there. There's a lot of that platform missing. It's only three miles further away, but a lot of that platform is gone. Now what's coming up is interesting. Once in a while, not very often, there will be days when conditions are right to see full image. Black swan, you say? No, once in a while, you see this. You see it due to atmospheric refraction. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Travis the Plain Truth went to the same place with a P900 and made the same video that you just looked at. He even threw in a pleasure boat right at the horizon for fun. Thanks, Travis. Oh, you a beer. I'm going to try to go back up to Santa Barbara again. Maybe I'm going to look to see when the low tide is so that I can... Uh... So I can get up there and maybe set up on a tripod. My tripod that I just bought can be lowered pretty close to the ground. So, oh, this is the same video I just showed. All right? Yeah, this is the same one. Let's see what happens when we overlay the unrefracted image on top of this highly refracted one foot observation. Hey, that's pretty interesting. Not only is the image highly refracted, it's also stretched, as you can see. Let's back away from it. Look how stretched that back platform is. Let's try it with Travis's observation. Oh, looks like the same thing, doesn't it? Let's try it again. Yep. Same thing. That's refraction. Does this observation debunk the number one globe killer? In a word, you bet your sweet ass it does. Well, uh, it's like seven words, but you get the idea. But this is a white swan. Does it debunk the black swan? No. It has nothing to do with it. You can show me five billion pictures or photos with the horizon before these platforms. Doesn't matter. All I need is this one. That's it. You follow? Probably not. You don't get the argument, ballers. That's the tear-jerking belly laugher. 
right? It's going to be about nine months until you can actually restate the argument, right? That's my first mission to get you guys to actually restate it word for word correctly. It's only a sentence. I'm thinking nine months. All right, so the white swans are dead. And number five, we all know it. Refraction, right? Refraction saves the day. Gravity, refraction, right? Yeah, that's what you got. Eh? You guys don't know, even know what refraction is. You don't. We all know you don't. Been out here five years. One of the first words I heard was refraction. I'm going to cut out a large part of the refraction dissertation that QE goes through. We frankly don't need to hear it. We're just going to skip to the punchline and guess what that might be. Why? Keyword terrestrial. You see, terrestrial refraction already assumes a sphere. That is, the calculations assume the radius of the Earth curvature, right? He even says it. The subject matter expert even says it. What are you going to do? Let's listen to Andrew Thomas Young again. Here he goes. The atmosphere is also curved. <laughs> yeah, right. As it follows the shape of the Earth. Uh, gases don't form curves. Really? Ever seen a car tire? I'll let you know. Let's start out. The atmosphere is also curved as it follows the shape of the Earth. In the calculations below, we'll adopt the rough value of 6,400 kilometers as the radius of curvature. To make the calculation simple, you can't, you can't do that. You see this, professor? You are assuming the premise, the atmosphere is curved. Uh, you're snorting some pretty good shrooms. Then by proxy, the Earth curvature. To prove the conclusion true, that is terrestrial refraction or looming. <laughs> It's a textbook back in the question fallacy. Oh, did Andrew Young assuming the Earth is curved get in the way of you assuming the Earth is flat, QE? Gee, I'm sorry. Yeah, but we're not going to stop, stop there. Where's the fun in that? Right. Let's take a look at this. So, we have Andrew Thomas Young's definition of looming, and then we have quantum eraser Andrew Thomas Young's Huckleberry. Let's see which one's correct with examples. So, from Andrew Thomas Young, looming. The appearance above the horizon of a distant object that would normally be hidden below it. Keep that in mind. From Quantum Eraser, looming is nothing more than an optical illusion produced by the sky being inferior miraged underneath an object, giving you the appearance of said objects floating above a false horizon. Huey is now going to build a straw man around his very own definition of looming which doesn't really bear much resemblance to the actual definition of looming. QE includes a, an inferior mirage, which is specifically not part of looming. Looming is nothing more than severe refraction, and that's exactly what we see in this video. The level of refraction and distortion is obvious, so QE's homemade science really doesn't make any difference. Let's skip to the end, get his final thoughts, and then we'll nail the lid on this coffin. Now, let's go back up. I want to go through the argument one more time. It's going to be quick. Now, if you see this argument, let's go to this. If you see this argument presented by anyone in any other form than what I am going to lay out and did lay out before, that is word for word, including this modus tollens, with the exact same photo, it is not the argument. Is this clear? Is this clear? Let's go with the argument, modus tollens. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, P, then any horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, Q. Not Q, because the horizon distance is greater than 9.41 miles, therefore not P. The Earth is not a sphere. It's their black swan. It's the kill shot. It's over. Now, like I said, if this argument is presented and doesn't go over each thing I said, it's not the argument. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm not signing off on it. 
Is this clear to everyone? Hopefully so. So that's it. That's all you got. Those two arguments. You deliberately confuse the geometric and apparent horizons to eliminate refraction, and that false claim is supposed to somehow mean the Earth is flat? I don't think so, Scooter. All it means is you have deliberately misrepresented the way refraction affects the apparent horizon. Even if the horizon is where you say it was in that video, and that's a big if, that's still easily explainable on a day with as much atmospheric distortion as was going on that particular day. This argument's got more holes in it than a wicker basket, Cuey. You gotta try harder. Then you turn around and claim one more ridiculously refracted video from a flat earther is somehow unique, and that means you found a black swan. Holy cow, son. Distorted, out-of-focus videos are the only kind you guys know how to make. Your black swan is about as rare as a black Volvo. I think that takes care of your arguments, Cuey. But I've got a question. Please explain this picture. Please explain to us how that can happen if the Earth is flat as you claim. What is obscuring platform habitat? Why is about the bottom 15 feet of the support structure on Hill House missing? You really need to come up with some answers for this one. We're waiting. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. Sorry for the length of this thing, but it took it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. There's a link to the Patreon. It'll be in the description also. And I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. Oh, by the way, no swans were injured during the production of this video. Hey, Gladys. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. We're out of here. Are we understanding each other? Huh? You're an idiot! <laughs>